Hey, so this week, I already have the schedule for the rest of the semester laid out on the on the website. If you take a look at that, so our uh, for this week, I know it's not there yet when I'm recording this class, but I'm doing everything ahead. I wanna just wanna get this done as soon as possible, so I will be able to record some of the feedback lectures or uh, just solving the homework assignments problems for you guys um, to do these things. But I have to get these lectures done first, okay? So this week, which is over here actually, I'm gonna start recording all the lectures over here. So these lectures, the first one is a differential amplifier. Uh, which is the main part of the OPAMP you are going to lay out in your uh, lecture VSI in the chip. And it's pretty simple. It's, we're not going too deep into that. We just need to know how to get the very initial design done and so you can go ahead and do the lab. And the theory will be covered over here in this lecture. And uh, on the Wednesday lecture, I'm going to start making the chip for you. So I'm going to do that one by one, step by step in the video, because I know you guys will have a lot of problems in the lab. So instead of leaving you guys do it by, handle that by yourself, I think I should uh, uh, redo it on, on my set and record it. So I'm going to do that and uh, submit the, these two videos here and here. So two videos should be able to good enough to get you through all these layout uh, problems. And Monday in next week's lecture will be a final exam preview and the exam will be a open book open notes exam so I have to be creative about the home about the uh, problems being put in the exam and because it's totally remote right so it's just it's not being done in the physical classroom and I will send it to you by this time and you can check your email and find out your exam and start working on that. Take a picture, picture, and send it back to me by email. And then we are done for the entire semester. Okay? It's close. There will be another homework, homework 12, after this lecture. And no homework for the rest of the semester. No more homeworks. So you just focus on the trip layout. Just that's it. So just gain the most from the chip layout. Don't worry about some, anything else. Um, and um, after the exam preview, you'll see there are two more lectures. I mean, because if we do not cancel the class over here, I think we still have time to cover more about the BGT trans transistors. It used to be a pretty important content in, in uh, any of the microelectronics classes. Here, we since we are making a CMOS-based chip, it's not the BGT based, so we are not going to spend too much time uh, on this topic. The thing is, since we cancel one class, one week of classes, just making this one, you know, from five or six lectures to two. So I really don't think we can put too many things about PGT, BGTs, like what I did two years ago into the exam. So you can see there's no whole, even homework assignments for this topic. So what I will do is I will run several examples for these two lectures and i'll let you know the one the one of the problem in the exam will be exactly the same as the example i am going to run in these two lectures i will probably let you know what are these problems and just practice on these ones remember some of the key concepts and i think that's it we cannot do more about it because you know we don't have a full semester um, all right, so let's start working on our uh, differential amplifier. Not this one, actually. Differential amplifier is over here, differential, but not the differential power. It looks pretty similar, but slightly different. Uh, you'll see. All right, a differential amplifier. And also we skip 
we skipped uh, the the counterpart of this one, which is not the differential amplifier, just the regular amplifiers, since we really don't have time to cover this thing. Uh, but anyway, I think you still learned a lot from this master. For example, you you know how to build an oximeter, oxy uh, amplify your heartbeat in the lab, and all these things. This this, this is kind of pretty uh, practical in the future. All right, so the differential amplifier looks like this. VDD, VDD, as the first uh, version, okay? We are going to improve it later. Um, and the current mirror load. So I have to bias this to MOS. We are just trying to call it V bias. Um, I have to name it. I just do this. Just being consistent with the uh, whatever in the CMOS textbook, okay? So this is V bias three. This is V bias four. If you want to see why, is just go back to the CMOS textbook. Doesn't matter. It's just the voltage. And we're not trying to uh, create a self biased voltage uh, using a, a self star circuit. We're just in a simulation. Uh, we're just going to provide a DC voltage to these two gates. And in your chip, we're going to use the external resistor to bias these two voltages to make it up, right? And the sizes for these two are 20 over 2, 20 over 2. And the size over here is 10 over 2, 10 over 2. And uh, this is M1, this is M2. And there will be a current, which is called ID1 current ID2 and um, DC voltages VI1 VI2 but Joseph's figure is I'm trying to tell you what's a maximum swing can happen in this circuit what's a maximum swing so now let's look at that for example we have a 40 microamps being being drawn from this current source okay it's being drawn from this joint so you can see two currents is moving to this point from the uh, voltage source so the current actually they came from uh, the voltage sources over here okay. but this is just one source. So the voltage source not voltage source the 40 micrograms is going to come from will come from uh, this vdd so what's the maximum swing so that you know what does that mean right so you have totally 40 microamps and when you are oscillating your inputs is that possible that you are getting something more than 40 microamps So after you bias, after you have biased your current source properly, and you bias these two guys to make it draw 40 microamps, okay? Is it possible to get more than 40 microamps overall? Just by swinging your two inputs over here. So the answer is no. Probably we need to add something in the front. So after... V bias three and V bias four are set. So the answer is no, right? Because how can I do that? This this is a current source, right? You know that current source will fix this the current for in this branch to be the exact value of the current source. You cannot change it. So it's going to be 40 micrograms. So in that case, what's the maximum, uh, what's the possible, maximum possible ID1 and the maximum possible value for ID2? What are they? So ID1 will be what? 
what's the range for ID1? Because you can think about that. When you are swing, you can turn on, turn off uh, VI1, VI2. If you turn off VI1, this will be turn off, right? So all of the 40 microamps current is going to flow from here. If you turn off this one, keep this one on, so all the 40 microamps is going to flow through this transistor. So ID1 has a range of 0 to 40 microamps. ID2 the same thing. So that's a maximum swing of the current. So by from this maximum current swing, you can calculate back to get the maximum voltage swing for these two terminals. And what are they? So you know that VDI, um, it's V uh, VI1. VI1 equals to what? Let's use a old equation. If we call this ISS over beta n, right? Beta n is using this one. And plus VTH. And then what? This should be VGS, right? But this is VI1, it's not VGS. This is VGS is going to be this one minus VS, and you have to plus VS as well. So that's VS, right? So that's VI1. And let's calculate this. So what is this? This will be 2 times 40 microamps over beta n is, let's calculate this separately, 100 microamps per voltage square that's kp times 10 over 2 right so that is this is actually this <coughs> And this will be so two times the current. Let's do a calculation over here. Uh, A over 600 and square root. So zero, so it's about um, 365 millivolts. Plus VTH, plus VS. So that's the maximum. That's the maximum, right? That's the maximum um, VI1. What's the minimum VI1? So you can get a swing, right? So the maximum minimum, you get a swing. So what's the minimum VI1? I mean, we have one. So this part will become zero. But it still have this, right? They're still there. So this will be VTH plus VS. So now the swing of of uh, the input voltage for the differential amplifier, the swing of VI1 will be what? It's going to be this minus this, so which is 365 millivolts plus VTH plus VS minus VTH minus VS, which is 365 millivolts. So that's the final voltage swing. And if we bias your two voltages, Two voltage inputs by 2.5 volts for DC, right? If you do that, then your maximum input swing, maximum input swing will be finally will be 2.5 plus 365 millivolts and 
um, as a max. VI1 and 2.5 volts minus 365 millivolts as the minimum. VI1. So that's the voltage swing. So what are they? So it's going to be uh, 2. Point eight six five volts and what two point one three five volts. All right, so that will be the that will be the voltage range for the input of the differential amplifier. And there's another thing. So when you start designing your differential amplifier, and what are these considerations you need to take? And we hope we have the wide swing range, right? So in that case, we hope this voltage to be just two times the uh, VDS set, right? So the first, so when you are trying to design this, you need to know what's VDS set in this one micro, one micro, uh, one micron technology. So let's start here. VDS set equals to VGS minus VTH, right? And uh, VDS, we, ha we have a uh, standard VD VGS for, uh, for this one micron technology. So the parameters can be found in the CMOS book. And we just design a overdrive voltage to be exactly the same as the VDS set, which is 1.06 volts for VGS minus 0 .2, 0 0.8 volts for the VTH, and you are getting 260 millivolts. So that's a standard overdrive voltage for this one micron technology, right? And we just use this. So this is one step, which is 260 millivolts, and there's another step. So totally two, two uh, so, so totally two times of the two times VDS set, which is 520 millivolts. And you can bias the, these two MOSs to make this happen. And we're just directly going to use this to VGS. V bias three, V bias um, four. So now you know what is this voltage, right? It's 1.06 volts. So what about this one? So it should be, VGS plus this guy. So it's going to be 1.06 volts plus this one, which is 1.32 volts. Okay, by biasing these two MOSs using these two VGS, you can reach a VDS set for each of them, just one by one. So this is the lowest uh, overdrive voltage for this point can give you a wide swing because you are directly biasing your two MOSs, uh, two MOSs at this point. So after you apply a DC voltage over here, for example, 2.5 volts as a DC offset, and you can bias these two MOSs in the middle, 2.5 volts, right? So this VDD, this is the maximum possible voltage you can you can uh, you can reach. So you get a wider swing over here. And that's the purpose. You don't want this one to be too high because if this is too high, you have to use the higher two point higher DC offset, which is moving toward here. And this moves to here, this moves to here, you get a super tiny swing, 
right? You want to utilize the entire saturation region if possible. So that's our purpose. Um, this, just remember these parameters we're going to use for our design, right? So these parameters. It's pretty similar, 500, 500 nanometer technology and the one micron that, uh, technology we're using in, in this uh, simulation. You know, you can, you can, you can use these ones. No problem. Mm. And uh, for the design of the open, when the first step is definitely you want to think about the overdrive voltage over. <clears throat> so we are setting up 260 millivolts doesn't mean that it only works for 260 millivolts okay so that's probably the smallest voltage we can use to make this all these devices being operated in the saturation region and at the same time we get a wide swing so when you are designing your uh, transistors at the very beginning the first thing you want to look at is VOV, the overdrive voltage. So we are setting up our overdrive voltage to be exactly the same as VDS set to, to get a wide swing. So that's the first step, right? So the second step is the ID. What the, what's the current you want to run through your, your circuits, right? Is that 40 micrograms or 20 micrograms or something else? And after no ID, you got GM. So after you got GM, you got your AC gain and you know bandwidth as well. But we are not uh, going to this talking about the AC performance for the open since so we don't have time. Uh, but definitely bandwidth and AC gain and all these parameters are based on all these DC operating points. So find out overdrive voltage first, which is here what we de define for our design, 160 millivolts. Uh, so this is uh, have have been proved uh, to work probably in the simulations, and as these are directly come from the um, the CMOS book. You can you can use higher values. I'm pretty sure it's going to work as well. But uh, you have to try different different values. We just want to keep this low, but not too low, right? So we just make sure all these transistors are uh, saturated. Excuse me. All right. So next, AC analysis for uh, this <clears throat> differential tire. And before I do that, we need to draw the uh, structure for the differential tire we're going to use. And the previous ones, see, you don't even have an output, right? So that's VDD. And you definitely don't want to set up your output over here because it is AC ground, you are not getting anything, right? So you need a load on the top. So now let's draw a load, add a load to this different amplifier. <coughs> so it's a current mirror load. This. And this guy, these two guys. So I'm going to draw a current from the top. And um, you want to bias these two guys, right? And how to bias it? So definitely you need a the current mirror where uh, the cascading current mirror we used in the in the previous lectures. And I'm gonna draw it in the next page. But uh, what about here? You know, when you are looking at this structure, so definitely you need so here's a signal, right? So that's the in and you need a DC offset as well to set up the reference voltage. Okay, and V bias three. So these two bias voltages, so they came from the current mirror. I, I didn't draw it here, but you should know that there should be a part here to bias these two transistors to draw a current from this joint. So based on this structure, you should know that this part 
is a current mirror is a current mirror load. So what this guy is doing is is converting. It converts so the current mirror load converts the output current into B out. And we're going to take a look at this right now. So why? So this point will be V out, right? So that's the output voltage. That's AC voltage. We have a V in, we have a V out. So you know the reason we use amplifier is we want to get a gain, voltage gain. So the voltage gain is being applied to the AC voltage. So that's V in, that's V out. We hope it's being amplified, right? So that's the purpose for this uh, using this different amplifier. And uh, <clears throat> How to find out the AC gain for this for this circuit? So this V in will inject an AC swing over here. Let's call it VGS one. Uh, if we, I want a number of this. For example, this is M one, M two, and M three, M four. And uh, for this one, there will be a RO2, right? And this one will have a RO4. And uh, this VGS1 will create a current. We call it ID1 flow in this channel. And this because in remember in uh, in last week we introduced uh, the differential pair you see that vgs is over here is going to because this is ground a ac ground so there will gen it, it's going to generate a vgs2 over here as well right and they are the same value but opposite to each other but for the, on, on this channel if we just look at over here this id1 because we short these two PMOSes, it's different from the differential pair we learned last week. So this ID1 will create a small VSG3 because you know ID runs through this one, it's gonna create a VSG. Right? And this VSG is being shorted to this PMOS as well, and it's gonna equal to VSG4. Right, and this VSG4 is going to mirror this current ID1 to this branch. So ID1 is going to flow through here. Is that magic? All right, it, you know it's making sense because this is a current mirror. Right, it's going to mirror this current over here to this direction, the same direction. So now we want to draw a small signal model to find out the AC gain. This is what we usually do. So you look at this part. Let's just draw it, separate it, since this looks like a little mess over here. And let's let's just draw it, separate it probably over here. Um, only this part, okay? That's R04, and that's the AC ground. And then, uh, almost, AC ground and um, is that AC ground over here? Yes, it is. I think it is. And a RO2. And this is VL. And what is this? This is not an AC ground because it's being connected to somewhere else. And this is VGS2. All right, so that's so that's the AC signal. Uh, that's the AC um, circuit over here. I want to convert this guy to AC model, right? Because this one has a little VSG four. So this is the active device. This is the current source. So it's gonna create a current. If we flip it, right? Because this is the ground. So let's flip it and flip it. So we make ground point to the uh, downwards but uh, 
the current source point up. So this part will be something like this. And that's VSG4, right? And VSG4 is going to create a current source going up and RO4 over here. And this point is this point, which is V out. That's V out. Okay? And this is ground. So remember, we flip it. So what about this part? Okay? So this part um, will be another current source because it has an active component over here creating current. Uh, and but this one should be GM, um, GM what and VGS what? <laughs> you don't know what is VSG for, right? But what you know is this current exactly is exactly the same as this one. So actually, this one is being passed to this transistor. This is actually VGS one GM one. Keep in mind, so this current flow through here is. VGS1, GM1, because it's being mirrored to these PMOS. And what about the other one? So this guy, it's being shorted to this point, right? And then after this point, it's, the current is flowing downwards from top to bottom. So you are going to draw a current source doing this. This is not ground, actually. So we shouldn't draw the ground. And with RO what? With RO2. Yeah, this can be confusing. The small signal model can be pretty confusing, but you know, no worries. And this one, we don't want, we don't need this anymore because we are using this uh, circuit, these two values because they are equivalent. So let, now let's just call it VGS one. I know it's not VGS one; it's indirectly affected, being affected by VGS one. But is there equivalent? We are using GM one and VGS one over here. So that's the circuit. That's the final circuit. So the question is, what is uh, uh, what is the output impedance for this point? Or you know, just make it simple. So what is the uh, AC gain for this equivalent AC small signal model? So what is this current? So this current is this guy, right? So this is G, uh, VGS two. Uh, GM2, right? So, yeah, by looking at the circuit, you, you can definitely move this one to here. So these two resistors will be in parallel with each other, with each other. And we can move the current source to the, make them closer, to make it easier uh, to find out the overall current uh, effect by these two current sources. So, what we can do is create a new page and redo this figure. So VGS1 is V in, right? You can find out. So VGS1 is literally V in for AC, because this is the AC ground. And um, so it looks like this. Going up, and another current source going down, and two resistors in parallel, RO2 in parallel with RO4. So the first one is GM1 VGS1, and the second one is GM2 VGS2. Okay, so this current is going into the joint, and this is coming going out, and this is going to there. So literally, you're having an overall current flowing out from this joint. And um, we can assume that one to be, you know, something, right? So V out actually equals to this current times uh, these two resistors. Okay? So V out equals to... Um, this current minus this current times the resistors. 
This will be GM1 VGS1 minus GM2 VGS2 because uh, K is not K, it's a uh, uh, node volt, node uh, current uh, theory, right? So PCL, um, the current, overall current going into the joint equals the current going out from the joint. So that's the current going into the joint, and this is one of the currents going out of the joint. So we try to get the other one. So we use this one to minus the other one, and getting this current and times R O two in parallel with R O four will be V out. Okay. So what is since we know V V G S one is V in, which is given that's uh, input voltage, and V G S two from the differential power we analyzed in in uh, in last week or two weeks ago. We know that VGS2 equals to uh, VGS1, but opposite, right? So what we can do is, so this equals to, um, <clears throat> GM, if GM1 equals to GM2, let's just, fix, you know, we just make it symmetric. So these two transistors are the same. So they have the same GM. So GM So we assume GM1 equals to GM2 equals to GM. So overall this will be GM times <clears throat> VGS1 minus VGS2 times RO2 in parallel with RO4. Right? And this is exactly the, the differential input of this differential amplifier. So we can denote this part as V D I. So which is the differential input voltage. And use V out over V D I equals to GM RO2 in parallel with RO4. So that's overall differential voltage gain. I can see that it's pretty large. It's not small. Okay? Uh, but the the uh, overall AC gain is GM of these two transistors, one of them, they're the same, times the parallel resistance of RO2 and RO4. Okay, so that's uh, that's the uh, AC voltage gain for this differential amplifier. Keep in mind, this is how you calculate it. So after we know this, we are thinking about that. So what's the final structure? What's the final look for our? I think I have two pages of uh, page three. I think. Uh, this should be page four. This should be five. Final look will be. <clears throat> Let's get our uh, cascading carmiers involved. That's a differential. Power. And here is a current source to draw a current from VDD. And you need two bias voltages, right? And uh, <clears throat> uh, of course, this one will be a uh, NMOS. And there will be another NMOS here to bias each of them separately. And remember, we connect this one to here to lower the voltage, drain voltage of this uh, transistor. And uh, definitely, this this one need to be biased as well. So we need a PMOS, and we need a MOSFET Y swing 
to bias this one and this one. Okay. And uh, this one also need a, yeah, I make it draw it too high here. This, these two guys need a current source to provide the current from the top. But however, these circuits are still inside the chip. We are not having a self-start um, bias voltage source for this design. So this, this is going to be a little bit different from the uh, commercial uh, amplifier, but you know, it's going to work. Just make it easier. And we need the PMOS being connected to this PMOSes. And now we need a resistor off the chip. So these are inside the chip. But this one is off chip. So we can adjust the resistance of this potential meter to change the biasing uh, current over here. So it's going to be meter here, here, and bias. This two current mirror probably, and then pass your differential pair. So this will be V minus. This will be plus V plus of the op amp, and here's the voltage output. And the voltage gain is only GM RO two in parallel with RO four, and we want to increase the gain a little bit more further. So usually we will add another stage out after this differential amplifier. So it's a gain stage. So this two will be biased by this um, by this current mirror as well. And this is VDD. And that's a final V out. And you're asking why this can increase the gain. Right? So now let's take a look at this. So this is a gain stage. So why is increasing your gain? So here is the input, right? So that's the input, and that's the AC gain, AC ground. And when the when the AC swing, AC signal is com uh, comes from here, and it's gonna create a AC AC current, which is a small ID across this one, and uh, it's gonna generate a GM times ROP gain extra. So if you draw the if you draw this one to the small signal model for this one, right? So this is V VSG P for example. So that's VSGP. That's VSGP. And it's gonna create a current flowing up to the output. Going up to the output because you know the the ground is over here. We just flip it, right? Flip it. The current is flowing from top to bottom here. If we flip it, it's gonna go up to the output, and there will be a resistor which is ROP, which is called ROP for this device. And uh, <clears throat> of course, you know it's gonna have a Pretty high resistance for this. Remember, still remember this one? What is this? This is GM RO square. So it's going to have a GM RO N square. And this is super large. This is way larger than this one. Probably thousands of times larger than this guy. So we, when these two resistors are in parallel, we can directly ignore this because they are too large. So the Overall, uh, overall VL will be this current is going to flow through here times ROP, right? And what is this current? It's GM <clears throat> VSGP, okay? So in that case, VL equals to V uh, GM. VSGP times ROP, okay? So if you move your input voltage to the other side, you are getting V out over VSGP equals to, which is the voltage gain, AC voltage gain, which is GM 
ROP. So you are getting the extra, extra uh, GM times ROP for the AC voltage gain. So the overall AC voltage gain for this structure we are going to lay out in the uh, uh, electric DR side will be something like grab a new paper to put it down there. <clears throat> So the overall AC voltage gain will be what? It's going to be <clears throat> um, this one, GM, RO2 in parallel with RO4, times this, GM, ROP. Keep in mind. All right, that's whatever I'm going to cover. I will cover for this lecture, and we are going to do a chip layout and get into the details for this old pump in the next two lectures. And hopefully, hopefully, we can get everything done uh, for the three lectures this week. And uh, we're going to move forward and wrap up this semester in next week, and then we are done. Okay. See you in the next video.